Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about this unique style of charcuterie board that I make using resin, bondo, and other unique features. Stay tuned. I start with cutting two pieces of three quarter inch MDF. First I glue with a waterproof type bond type three. I make sure everything's clean, put the glue on, spread it around so it's all flat and even. And then I screw those once those two pieces are together. Now I'm just cleaning up those surfaces where the screws left those funky little dimples and sections of the MDF. I want it nice and smooth for the next uh, part, which is going to be paint. next part is the most unique part, I think, of all, where I'll take Bondo after I fill all those holes from the uh, screw dimples. I take Bondo and mix it, the, the appropriate uh, mixture, with the hardener. And this stuff is rock hard when it dries, so it's perfect for this application. So what I want to do is create this really unique texture around the outside. It kind of looks like smoothed out stone and like granite. And I love that organic look. So what I'm doing is mixing it up and then applying it to the edges. So if you're going to do this, just keep in mind that Bondo dries extremely fast and you're better off making smaller mixtures, applying it, and then making another mixture because within like five minutes, it's dry and you get this really thick putty-like stuff. And what I do is pretty soon after it's solid and, and it gets kind of rubbery, so it, it's really hard to, to work with in terms of uh, molding and shaping things. But I go back and I scrape it off. Otherwise, when it's rock hard, it's really difficult to get off. So I go back pretty soon after, mm, I'm going to say 20 minutes to a half an hour, I go back and I get rid of any sharp edges if, if they're really pronounced or... Um, Anything that I, I can get off without ripping it apart, uh, you know, before it gets rock hard. And I scrape those things off so I'm not, not I, so I don't have a real battle when I go back to clean it up. And a day later, after it's very hard, very dry, and stuck on there, it's not coming off, I sand it. And if it's really coarse, I'll use a, an electric sander. If not, I'll just go with... Um, this is an 80 grit or 60 grit, something like that. Pretty coarse. I go and uh, sand down any really sharp edges. I don't care if it's uneven. In fact, that's what I'm looking for, an uneven organic kind of edge. The next stage is putting a coat of oil-based black paint. Why do I use black? Because black falls off. So when I put on the resin, I'll put part of the um, perlex in there that's black so it kind of hides. And I do this on all four sides and also on the top and the bottom. 
So, and I get into those little grooves and you can see I'm using a foam brush here. I'm trying to get into those little undulating features that are on the edges. There are some divots there, so you have to really work at getting in there. You can use a chip brush, but remember those chip brushes, depending on the quality of the brush and how much you pay for them, can leave a lot of the fibers and and then you're going to have a dimple and yeah, just stay away from that. Use a foam brush. And I also use an oil-based paint because it, it seals it better. It's just um, for what I'm doing, adding resin, I believe it's a better quality paint. Uh, I've used enamel, not enamel, but I've used latex in the in the past. And well, there you can see me getting into those little divots and grooves and important to get in there. But anyway, using um, oil base helps with sealing, basically, that MDF. You want to make sure that it's a, it's sealed really well. And it this is a gloss, so it, it just uh, does a nicer job than a latex paint. It's on the bottom that I make sure I have all those coats of paint on there. When it's fully dry, I flip it over, make sure that it is absolutely level, and then I move on to mixing my resins. I'm using black. It's kind of a charcoal-y black with some pearlex in it, and I'm using copper, and I am using also a, a bronze. Now I'm mixing up clear resin, and then I pour three different cups of that resin and I used a paddle to mix up that resin so it's got a lot of air bubbles in it, which isn't a problem in the end because I use a torch to get rid of those bubbles. So I mix all three of those colors up and here I'm just pouring something extra for another project I have in the works. Once I mix up resin, if I've got some mixed up, I'll use it for other things, especially if I have excess. I don't like to waste. So I have made a lot more of the black because that needs to coat everything, the top and the sides. So I made a lot more and I start with that first and I smear that around and get that pretty much over everything. There might be a few areas where I don't cover it completely, but next I come back with the bronze and um, that's the second largest amount and then I pour that. And depending on how many air bubbles I see coming up, I will torch in between uh, layers. So now I'm adding one of my accent colors, that being copper. It adds depth and interest and it makes the whole piece more aesthetically pleasing. I'll add end cards to other videos that I've made of resin where I've used the black and the bronze and the copper and uh, they'll, they'll go at the end of the video. Now sometimes I use the heat gun or the torch rather to, or you can use a heat gun to smear these and blend these colors. 
which I use a hair dryer on hot, but I don't use it on high because it can push the resin right off of your surface. So I put the uh, hair dryer on a low and I sometimes get close and that's how I change the intensity of the, the uh, smearing process by being closer or further away and that that blends all of these colors and just leaves this gorgeous mix of ethereal almost looking values and uh, hues so because they sometimes mix together like the copper and the bronze and but they mix so that's what I'm doing now and once I'm happy with the look of this blend I'll spray some isopropyl alcohol now this can make something called cells or dimples and I'll have to show you a close-up of those to show you how those look. You can see one there, I'll point to it, and it really just adds another depth level and interest to the uh, piece itself. So I just continue to add and be careful not to go overboard because you can go overboard with any artistic design. You have to sort of, I get a feel for it, and I make a decision on when it's enough or it needs something more. And in this case, I did add a few different uh, layers of resin, colored resin, and blue and copper to add more pop and interest. Now, the beauty of working with resin is you can do this. And, you know, so your design is up to your creative expression. And uh, I like the blending and blurring, so I was adding more here to, to get that effect that I liked. The next day, when the resin is dry, it's an extremely glossy surface which is beautiful, except it scratches easily. So I add this material, it's a top coat, and that makes it extremely durable. Right now it's wet, so it has that textured kind of bubbly look, like a cream white color that dries, and you don't see that anymore, which you'll see in a minute. But it's a very good top coat. I implore you, if you're doing resin, to use this. I'll add a link to that below. Since this is a charcuterie board or a serving tray, they need handles. So I bought this jig to help me position the holes. They're three inch wide uh, handles and you'll see me using this jig. I'll put a link to this jig below. It's It was great. It made things much quicker and very simple to use. So you'll see me using this. And I put obviously two handles, one on either side. What I do is find the center, and then everything is lined up. Those places where the holes go, that is, they're three inches apart. So I find center, I mark the edge on the one side, and then I can uh, mark the holes and drill the marks for the screws to go in. I did add feet to these, which I also painted with the black glossy paint, and uh, I didn't record that, but I added it to raise it above where these screws would hit the, the base. And there it is. So, very cool idea. If you want to do it, go for it. I'll answer any questions you have. Put them in the comments below. If you liked it, and you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. And check out the videos here that I talked about earlier.